Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our living and loving Redeemer. Amen. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! The people in the streets are crying out, Hosanna! Save us! Why are they crying out for salvation? Because they're homeless. Could be. But the, the people in our text today, if, if you look at the time of year it was, it was the time of the Passover. The, the Passover feast that the, the children of Israel remembered how Yahweh had saved them. They had spent 400 years as slaves in Egypt. And then God raised Moses up to deliver them from that, from that slavery. God took them and he delivered them out of slavery in Egypt and brought them into the promised land. That's what they are preparing to celebrate. So that is fresh on their mind. And while they are no longer slaves in Egypt, they are still not fully free. They're, they're living under the rule of Rome. They are not free to do whatever they wish. They still need salvation. And so they cry out, Hosanna, save us. They see Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And they, because they are immersed in the scriptures, and it is a part of their DNA, they remember this prophecy from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey. Their king is coming. Their king is here. And what will their king bring? The end of that prophecy says, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return you to your strongholds. Return to your strongholds, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. They are excited. Salvation is here. Hosanna. Save us. Of course, the people in our text are not the only people who are in need of salvation. They are not the only people in need of saving. We may live in a free country, but we are all enslaved in one way or another. And I'm not talking about big tech or government overreach or, or, or foreign influences. No, we're all enslaved by things like addiction, whether it's drugs alcohol, pornography, gambling, anything that is controlling us that we are not free from. We can be enslaved by the need of approval from others. Whether it's kids trying to get into the in crowd or, or even adults needing that, that approval from others as we shape and craft our lives on social media so that others will approve of us and validate us. That can be something that we are enslaved to. But what about work and the need for success? You might be getting paid, but you can become enslaved in, in chasing after that next promotion or waiting for that next paycheck. These are all things that can enslave us. So where can you go for help? Well, there are no shortage of self-help gurus or organizations that can help you break various addictions in your life or to help you feel fulfilled within yourself and not need the approval of others or how to manage that balance between work and home life. Some people go to those self-help gurus or, or other things. Uh, some people double down or, or maybe get enslaved to something else, they, they, they try to break one addiction or one enslavement by, by falling into another. Others come to the church. And in church, they, they go there to find help. My, my life has fallen apart. Church, help me with that. My, my kids seem to be out of control. Church, help me to raise my kids. I feel 
lonely and like I have no place to belong. Church, please give me a place to belong. Church is a good place to come and look for help. It's a good place to come to be rescued. In some ways, it's like the crowd. The crowd in our text today, they are in the right place. They're not looking to, to government leaders. They're not li looking to great personalities to find their salvation. Jesus, the Son of God, is riding into Jerusalem, and they find themselves crying for salvation to the exact person they should be calling to. Jesus. They're looking to Jesus for help. But everything is still not right. There's still something off. How do we know? Well, if you continue on in the text, if you continue uh, actually in, in the church this week, we, we celebrate Holy Week. Again, on, on Thursday, Jesus will gather together with his disciples in the upper room as they celebrate the Passover, but also what we call the Last Supper. And Jesus institutes his Holy Supper, Holy Communion, that he gives to them and to the church. Later that night, he'll be in the Garden of Gethsemane praying with his disciples. He will be arrested. And that's when, when we find out that things truly aren't right. Because these crowds of people that just days before had been shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Save us! This same crowd will be shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! What went wrong? How could these people who were in the right place crying for help from the right person, how can things change so quickly? They had been crying to Jesus for help. They had been crying out to Jesus for salvation. They were going to the right place. What went wrong? Here's the thing. If you don't know why you truly need help, if you don't know what you really need to be saved from, even looking in the right place for help and salvation won't do you much good. It, it might in, in the short term. People, again, often come to church to look for help. After national tragedies like 9-11, churches were filled with people looking for help, looking for security, looking for answers. Whenever there's a, a natural disaster, like a, like a hurricane or an earthquake, again, the following Sunday, churches will be even more full because people will be looking for answers, and they're looking in the right place. But at the same time, it won't be... Looking for answers to the wrong questions won't always provide the answers you're looking for. These people who, who cry out for help don't realize the depth of their help. Actually, uh, eventually, if they're looking for help with their kids, they might find belonging for their children or a better way to raise their kids elsewhere. If they're coming to church to find belonging, to find a place where they can find fellowship, eventually they might find that elsewhere on a sports team, or some other club, or in their neighborhood, and they might turn away. Even if these smaller problems in our lives are solved, there still lies that greater problem. That greater problem of sin. Sin is our greatest need. That sin that separates us from God. That's why these people looking to Jesus, that's why people coming to church looking for help is coming to the right place. But if you don't know why you are coming, the answer will, will not last very long. One sad reality is that I, mean, I love seeing so many people. It is amazing to see the church full like this. But the sad reality is that attendance coming out of COVID is down across the board. Every pastor I talk to, we, we talk about what were your numbers before, and not that numbers are everything, and what are your numbers after. And there are a number of reasons for this. 
Some people may have moved away or, or changed which church they're going to. There are some people who still ha have health concerns and aren't comfortable gathering in large groups. But the sad truth is that over the past three years, many people have just said, I don't miss church. I was going to church to find a place to belong. I was going to church to have a place to raise my kids. I was going to church for whatever reason, and over the last three years, they found that elsewhere. And while people may have found that rescue elsewhere, that deeper underlying need is still there. Our separation from God. And so while it, it is great to come, and we want people to feel like they belong, we want children to have a place to go to, 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 to learn the Bible in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, to have a, a youth ministry where, where kids can not only learn more about God, but, but, but make friends, and friends who they can share their faith with and encourage each other in the walk with the Lord. And the reason we want people here in church is because the church is the one place that has that one answer that no one else can give. That salvation is found in one place, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I pray that as we begin this holy week, <coughs> as we look at all of the areas in our lives where we may find need, we would keep at the center that one great need of true salvation, of true freedom that is found in one place, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we would look to him for answers, and we would share that answer with others. Amen. And now, may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>